Okay, today we're going to talk about the muscles of the head. We're going to start with the frontalis muscle. It covers the frontal bone here. Notice the direction of the fibers. They're running up and down like this. Remember, when muscles contract, they're going to shorten. So if they shorten, those fibers are going to pull up like that. And what it's going to do, the action will be to raise the eyebrows. So that's real simple. Frontal bone, frontalis muscle, and when it contracts and sh or shortens, it's going to raise the eyebrows. Uh, then you have, it also is going to be connected to this epicranial aponeurosis or epicranius, and that connects this frontalis muscle back here to the occipitalis muscle. And so <clears throat> when these contract, they kind of go as a unit. So you can also say that one of the functions of the frontalis muscle is to uh, pull the scalp backwards as well. If you look at the fibers of the occipitalis muscle here that covers the occipital bone in the back of the head, they're running in that same direction like this. So when they shorten, they're going to pull, and this whole scalp will pull back like that. And again, it goes as one unit because of this epicranial aponeurosis. Then you have the temporalis muscle, which is going to be on the uh, side here. kind of runs above the ear. You can see it um, better on this one right here. It kind of fans out above the ear. Um, and it covers the temporalis bo or temporal bone. And when the temporalis muscle contracts, that's going to slightly elevate your mandible, and then it's also going to be used to help you wiggle your ears. I would demonstrate that, but I'm not coordinated enough to do it. Then um, on the front of the face, you've got the uh, masseter muscle. I don't know if you can zoom in on that. Um, it's, it's a little short strip of muscle that uh, runs right here, going up and down in this direction. So when it contracts or shortens, it's going to pull up, and so that raises the mandible. So it helps you chew, helps you close your mouth. You can see it on this muscle model here as well. It's this big strip of muscle that runs right in front of the ear. And so when that contracts or shortens, it's going to help pull up this mandible or that lower jaw there. Um, then on the front of the face, you've got um, these muscles here called the zygomaticus major and minor. Uh, the major is this big one on the outside, the minor is on the inside here. They run from the corner of your mouth up to your zygomatic bone or your cheekbone. So notice the grain of the fibers going this direction. So when they shorten, they're going to kind of pull up like this, and that's going to make the corners of your mouth raise up. So the zygomaticus is going to be your smile muscle. That's going to help lift the corners of your mouth. Then you have the bucinator muscle. And the bucinator muscle is a little confusing because it's actually deep inside your cheek. Remember the buccal cavity is the cavity between your cheek and your, the inside of your cheek and your teeth, that space right there. So the bucinator muscle is going to be this very deep muscle that um, helps you when you blow. So if you do like that, you're contracting to blow. Do it again. It also, hmm? Do it again. There <laughs> and then it also, um, it helps you hold uh, food up against your teeth. So when you're chewing, you've got to have, like, imagine if this is just flopping around, you're not going to chew as well. So it kind of contracts and helps you pull food up against your teeth so that you can crush it up. Um, the bucinator muscle, again, is deep. So like if you're looking at this one, can you zoom in on this one? Um, don't confuse it with this muscle right here. That's the rosorius. We're not going to ask you to know that one. It's the one underneath that, that deep muscle that runs in the same direction. Uh, but it, it's uh, the very deep muscle there, okay? That's the bucinator. Then you have the orbicularis oculi. That's going to be these circular muscles that run around your eye. An orbicularis muscle is a sphincter muscle. Anytime you have a sphincter muscle, it's going to clamp down and close. So you take a big circle, and then that circle is going to close down. Be thankful you have like anal sphincters or you just be walking around dropping poop everywhere. So we want sphincter muscles. Well, when this sphincter muscle here closes, the orbicularis or, uh, oculi, that's going to cause you to either wink or blink. Um, and it actually is also going to depress your lacrimal glands that are uh, inside your uh, corner here. So when you cry, Lacrimal glands are up here. Excuse me, the lacrimal duct, duct that's, don't confuse it with what I just did. The lacrimal duct is down here. We studied that with the bones. But the glands are up here, so when it contracts, it's going to depress those lacrimal glands that drain into the lacrimal duct, which drains into your nasal cavity, and you get snotty-nosed. Okay, um, then you have the orbicularis oris. Think oral cavity, oris. That runs around your mouth. Um, 
that helps you do the uh, pucker action there. So that's your the one that makes you kiss. Then you have running across the bridge of your nose. And this one's not very clear. Let me see if this one is. This one's a little bit more clear here. It runs in this direction here. You've got the nasalis muscle. Think nasal nose. So that runs across the bridge of your nose. Now notice when that contracts, it's not going to make you like snarl your nose like this. That's, that's a muscle that's going to be shortening this way. So the nasalis muscle is, when it contracts, it's going to make your nostrils flare out. Let me see if I can do it. I can't. I forget it. All right, anyway, that's the nasalis muscle. All right, then you have the sternocleidomastoideus muscle. And that's this big muscle that runs right here. And the name tells you all the origins and the insertions. You've got the sternum, the clavicle, and the mastoid process, that big chunk of bone right behind your ear. So those are the three uh, origins and insertions. Now, the difference between an origin and an insertion. An origin is going to be the part that's anchored. It doesn't move, that part of the muscle that doesn't move. And then the insertion is going to be the part that moves. So when that muscle contracts, it's going to pull against something. So the part that's being pulled on, that's going to be your insertion. Or, yeah, your insertion. All right, so the origin is the anchor point, the insertion is a part that doesn't move. Well, with the sternocleidomastoideus, your insertion is going to be your uh, mastoid process here. Your clavicle and your sternum are not going to move. And what happens, and I can make mine kind of stick out right there, when you turn your head to the side, that's gonna, that, that muscle's going to pop out when it contracts. So my mastoid process is moving, but my clavicle and my sternum are not moving. So that's the insertion. These are your origins. Um, the actions of the sternocleidomastoidus are a couple of them. First of all, it's going to allow you to turn your head. If just one contracts, you're going to turn your head to one side. If they both contract, your head's going to go down like this, just be brought forward. Another thing that it'll do, and you can put your hand on there and kind of feel your sternocleidomastoidus, then take a deep breath. And when you think you can't inhale anymore, inhale again, and you'll feel it pop out. You might can see it. Let me try it again, see if it pops out. Did you catch it? <laughs> Look right here. I can feel it. Uh -huh. Okay, so it pops out. So that's going to be a synergistic muscle when you're inhaling. So any muscles that work together to do the same thing, we call those synergistic. So that's another synergistic activity of that. So the two origins on this are going to be the clavicle and the sternum. The insertion is the mastoid process. And then the action is it pulls your head towards your shoulder, um, if you do one or both, down like that, and helps with breathing or inhaling. All right, then finally you have the platysma muscle. And hang on just a second. Here is a picture of the platysma muscle. You see it coming up like this. Basically, the platysma muscle is, um, originates in your clavicle and sternum. It just kind of goes across your, your chest right here. So it's going to go from here. This is going to be the origin. And then it goes up like a sheet. And then it just comes to the corners of your mouth and to the bottom of your mandible. And that just is where it inserts. So this whole thing just makes this sheet of muscle. Well, when that contracts, just picture the fibers are running up like that. Well, when that contracts, it's going to pull down like this, and it's going to open your mouth. So it's going to make you frown, and it's also going to help depress the mandible or open the mandible up. It's also, you can feel it when you swallow. You can just feel that whole sheet of mu uh, muscle, the platysma, kind of helping you swallow. Um, so it's got several actions. It's going to be antagonistic to the zygomaticus, because the zygomaticus is the major and minor right there. They're going to pull up and make you smile. The platysma is going to make you frown, so those would be antagonistic or opposite actions um, of muscles. I think we've covered everything on the head. <laughs>